I'm Walt Meyer from the National Snow and Ice Data Center. And on behalf of my colleagues, Mark Schutte at the University of Colorado and Scott Stewart at NSIDC, I'm going to talk about sea ice in the Arctic and how it's getting younger and thinner uh, and why that is a big part of the Arctic change over the last 35 years. First, a quick background on the National Snow and Ice Data Center NSIDC, we're part of the Cooperative Institute for Research and Environmental Sciences, or CERES, at the University of Colorado at Boulder. And one of our main uh, aspects is that we host the NASA Snow and Ice Distributed Active Archive Center, or DAC. And I am the DAC scientist at NSIDC. So we archive and distribute NASA data sets, particularly snow and ice and cryospheric data sets, but also other data sets such as soil moisture and water resources and global change detection data sets. So first, why track sea, aid, sea ice age? Well, age is a proxy for thickness. Ice that survives summer melt, it, it continues to grow the next winter and thickness increases. So year after year, uh, ice gets thicker in general on average and older ice then is essentially thicker ice. And this is useful because we have some recent thickness observations um, from, for example, the ESA Cryosat-2 radar altimeter and the NASA Ice Cloud and Land Elevation Satellite ISAT-2, uh, whose data are archived at the NSIDC DAC. Uh, but these are relatively short term, and only over the last decade or so. And before that, the, the observations of thickness are very sparse in space and time. But age gives us a long term change uh, week by week since 1984. So it gives us the long-term context of the changes. So now I'm going to show you the changes that we're seeing in our Ice Age data. And just to quickly orient you, we're going to start in January of 1984. You can see the darker area, darker gray is younger ice. So the darkest gray is new ice that's between zero and one years old. That means that it hasn't survived a summer melt season. And then as you get lighter, it gets older and survives more and more summer melt seasons till you get to more than four years old. On the left at the top is, is a graph of the uh, extent in millions of square kilometers with the, uh, the maximum in green for that week um, over the course of the, the record. And then purple is the average. So you can, you can compare the current week, which is in white, uh, with the average and the maximum. And you'll see this change as we go week by week. And these are weekly data. And as we look at this, I uh, will start the animation. So as we start in 1984, what you see is this kind of pulsing of the ice cover. The ice grows out in the winter and then it contracts in the summer. Most of the Arctic Ocean stays ice covered here. And you see much of the Arctic is covered by this lighter old ice that's more than four years old. But as we get into like the late 1990s that you're seeing here, you can see a lot of the ice uh, that's older is starting to disappear. And what's happening is it's, it's moving around with the winds and currents and the old ice is getting pushed out of the Arctic along the coast of Greenland through what's called Fram Strait down towards the Atlantic where it eventually melts out. But it's not getting replaced here. Uh, more is getting moved out than what is being grown and what's being replaced. So you can kind of think of this as, as like a bathtub where you've got the input of ice getting older and then the drain, and the drain here is getting bigger compared to the, the faucet. Um, so now we're in the 2000s. It's, it stays relatively stable from the mid 1990s into the early 2000s um, as the ice um, still moves around with the currents but as we get into the 2005 here, um, you'll start to see again another uh, big decrease in the ice cover in terms of the older ice. Um, and in 2007 and 2008 here, and what we start to see north of Alaska is actually ice melting out within the Arctic Ocean um, because the waters are getting warmer and the ice is getting more broken up. And so even this older, thicker ice is melting away. And this older, thicker ice, four years old and older, is three to more three to four meters thick, so ten to twelve feet thick. While that darker gray, the zero to one year ice, is going to be at most two meters or about six feet thick. So you can see that this is representing a big thinning of the ice cover overall. 
And as we go into July 19, 2018 and 2019 and stopping here in 2019 in September, you can see there is very little of that oldest ice left. Um, there's a lot more open water at the end of summer, but also what's left is a lot thinner and younger. And so comparing, just uh, looking at a time series of this on the right, you can see here starting in 1984 on the left uh, end of the axis and going through, this is now updated through 2020, the animation went through 2019. But this oldest ice, the lighter color, greater than four years old, it's nearly disappeared. It used to be about 30% of the ice cover, and now it's, it's about 5%, 2 to 5%. Um, and then on the left, this is just a comparison uh, of 1984 from the middle of March, where we typically have our maximum extent for the season right around that time period. And again, you see the oldest ice, the light colors dominating the Arctic Ocean there. And then when you go to the most recent March 2019 in the animation, um, most of that has disappeared and we have very little ice except a, a fairly thin strip along the north coast of Greenland and the Canadian archipelago, the Canadian islands. And so it's a big change in the Arctic ice cover. Um, we see a change in the extent and a decrease in extent and the ice age is showing us that it's thinning as well. Um, so just want to uh, finish up here. The animation was created by the NASA Scientific Visualization Studio, or SVS, at NASA Goddard, uh, and produced by Cindy Starr. It's available at the SVS website or on YouTube. And the products that go into that are NASA products um, that are based on ice motion, and then we have the Ice Age pro products uh, with the principal investigator, Mark Schutte, and both of those are available online through the NSIDC DAC. And so with that, I will finish up and, and thank you for your attention. And uh, please let me know if you have any questions, walt at nsidc.org. You're welcome to contact me. Thank you.